I have to say, when it's weather like this, I remember um, one of our friends from Liverpool, and we actually have a law uh, named after him, Morley's Law we call it, and that is um, anyone can go out to sea, but a wise sailor knows when to stay in. Um, because it is uh, Salty Lassie's bouncing a wee bit, um, we've uh, put some safety lines on, um, but um, I have to say the nylons are stretching like good uns in blow, blow like this. Very different inside, isn't it? You wouldn't know it's blowing a hoolie out there. No, um, Salty Lass is just so snug and, uh, in my opinion, divine, but... You know, but like I say, it might be blowing a bluely out here, out there, sorry, out there, but in here, it's fine. And um, she's just rocking nicely, and that's what we want. Okay, we're free at the back. Okay, engaging. himself yeah because um Bobby and I were racing across the channel and we were going at a nice eight, 90 degrees to the channel so that we were basically through the channel as quickly as possible I think the thing is I can see the stem super fast coming in and maybe the channel's too narrow for both of them well maybe I don't know but it's just the fact that it was just annoying us because we were like what's the closest approach and what's our decisions and things like that but he just confused us a bit because he came out of the channel. Yeah, but we're well away from him now, which is good, so I'm going to steer us directly for Bangor. <sighs> we're just going to go and get some fuel because... Um, there's no wind worth a darn. Well, A, there's no wind worth a darn, but B, I just like having... I like having it there because if, it's, if you have it, you, you've got more range and stuff like that. And, um, engine is you get out of jail free card in these in these situations and um, no fuel no engine no engine so you know let's make sure we have that so then Beverly my plan for tonight is to anchor isn't it Bev? that's the idea uh, we just have to get there we're having to motor sail because the winds are quite light but they're slightly off to that side so we're making the most of them and using the motor at about 2,000 revs to give us a little bit of extra oomph. But we've been talking about tidal calculations, to be quite honest. <laughs> Inner did my head in. Beverly's eyes were just going mental. Honestly, I was just saying, we're aiming for a 5 metre uh, contour line. Oh, Lord, he's so, again. because we have a. Um, our, the distance. Um, between for our um, 
Because the thingy is about there under the doofy, <laughs> you've got to subtract the what tip from the uh, from the um, um, the muddy bit on the bottom. <laughs> Uh, luffing like mad so I've just had to put it away depressing but the main's still out and um, hopefully that's you know when we're most sailing like this it only adds about what half a knot yeah half a knot but do you know what get what you can when you can that's what we say well I'm depressed again happens when you go sailing in October? It's not October! Feels like it. I know it feels like October. It's though. wet, it's grey, stormy weather. And I, I don't understand it. The stormy weather and there's no damn wind. <laughs> so for four knots of wind and we're making all of it. So the maid is just wandering around here so it's just got to go away. Yeah, it's becoming a bit of a danger, isn't it? It is, so that's going to go away and uh, all the way, other than that, not much is happening. Well, we've dropped the uh, mainsail and uh, just ended, which you know I hate. But um, we had very, very light winds, but our speed dropped by 0 0.2 knots. So. You know, when you are motor sailing in these really, really light winds, you are only talking, as I say, in this particular case, it's only 0.2 knots. But, do you know what? 0.2 knots is 0.2 knots in our book. We're currently having a, a row on pedantics of language. Not did, right. Apparently I'm not arguing with anybody, I'm just pointing it out. Apparently we did not. I'm just... We did not. I did not, we did not take what we could get because we just threw it away because the sails are down. Yep, they are. So, did not do my best to keep the, keep that 0.2 knots <laughs> extra speed. Oh, anyway, that, that on Salty Lass is classed as a major argument. You can tell that we get on. and hopefully that's us for the night. It's time to get dinner part two on and just relax. Ah, well, we're in the secret anchorage location down here and um, we're sitting out weather. We're traveling north and at the minute the wind is directly from the north so we'd have to beat all the way up the North Channel and I've been in the North Channel in these kinds of winds before and it wasn't particularly pleasant and I've got no desire to repeat it. So we've come in to um, the secret anchorage. We're in behind the hill here and the power station. Uh, the power station does use seawater for its cooling and you can see all the sea foam. We're totally surrounded by what looks like giant shaving cream or something like that, just floating past. So um, it's a little peculiar but it doesn't do any harm. Um, the sea state in here is non-existent. It's smooth or slight and um, outside I'm sure it's a lot lumpier but we can't see from where we are. During the night when we came in we had the tide running out, we dropped the anchor and during the night the tide is now running in and the winds have got up and we have dragged anchor slightly. When we came in I was using this pylon over here and the legs were perfectly in line and um, that's where we were. 
This morning, the anchor alarm went off, and when I looked at the pylon legs, as you can see now, they're slightly out of line with each other. We've come further back, and I'm looking at the chart here. The area where we dropped the anchor is about five, maybe 10 metres outside our 50 metre circle, and we're on 40 metres of chain. So I think we've moved about a boat length. And I suspect it happened when the tide changed. We probably plucked the anchor up and it's reset. We've got something like a quarter of a mile behind us, so we're not in any urgent worry. This mud bank that we're anchored in goes all the way down, but it is mud, so the anchor can drag through this stuff. But it's nice and sheltered in here. The wind is going to come round behind that hill and give us even more shelter. And we're just going to sit this weather out until, until it becomes more pleasant. So I guess what we're going to do now is be at our pegs, go down and eat. <laughs> Two hours off the turn of the tide, so the tidal stream is dropping. The wind is becoming a bit less intense. We are getting gusts up to about 30 knots. Uh, most of them are in around 25, 26 knots. Um, but the important thing for us in here is the sea state is quite calm. So we're not getting bashed around. Uh, it's quite pleasant to sit here and just get on with things. The solar panels are doing a great job. Uh, boat batteries are fully charged. Again, you're sitting downstairs doing some work on the computer and I've charged my computer up and we're just having a relaxing time of it. It's nice to be at anchor. Marinas are fine but it's nice to be out and about and thankfully today we've got more blue sky than we had yesterday because yesterday felt like October. It was not very pleasant and we didn't particularly enjoy it but you know we are where we are and we're just keeping an eye on the weather and hopefully it will clear up in the next day or two and we can get across to Scotland. Now, quite what we're going to do when we get over there, we have not quite decided yet. And that is still a matter of ongoing discussion. And it will depend purely on the weather and how that's going to pan out and where we can go and not get ourselves bashed to bits, to be quite honest. Um, we're not one of these exciting expedition sailors that like to be rolling down six metre waves and smashing into the one in front. That's not really what it's about. At least, not on this boat. One of the other little things that has come up is that we have had some more donations from some of our Ko-Fi coffee supporters. And I just want to say thank you for that. And it, it, it leads into a, a little conundrum, a little problem that I've got. And that is, that I have a, have a standing rule that we never put anyone's name on YouTube unless they say we can do so. And I do reply to people on the coffee account. Um, but I don't seem to get replies back. So whether or not those messages are going through to the people who've made donations, I'm not actually sure. So if you are one of those people who have made a donation on the coffee account and could you just leave a comment in the YouTube comments just to let me know whether or not you do get the messages back because sometimes I post things in there like footage that we don't use elsewhere or on the main channel um, and it would just I would just like to know that you do get our acknowledgements uh, get our thank yous saying <laughs> thank you so much for supporting us and um, if I'm doing something wrong please do let me know if if you want to have your name mentioned on the main channel just say so I'll be happy to put it in but for all of you who have contributed and not heard anything back, I have responded and we are grateful and I would just like to know whether or not you're receiving those messages. So apart from that, everything's quiet. We're just going to have a nice relax. Well, uh, that's better from the future. Uh, I just wanted to update the comments I made about um, Kofi accounts and things like that. Um, we've had a recent donation from somebody who has said he would love to be identified on the channel so Shuggy of Troon as he has asked to be known thank you very 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 much for um, the donation it was absolutely wonderful and when we find something that of note that we can spend it on we'll update the channel and let everybody know but thank you so much for doing it Shuggy of Troon thank you very very much and normal programming will be resumed next week <laughs>